Welcome everybody. This is Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know. That's www.growbecauseyouknow.com. Welcome to Morning Mindset Cafe, where we read a little bit of Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. Pages 217 to 221 is what we'll be reading today, according to my version. It's called The Sixth Sense, and no, we won't be discussing the movie. So I shall begin reading and then open the room up for discussion. Let's get started. Chapter 14, The Sixth Sense, The Door to the Temple of Wisdom, The Thirteenth Step Toward Riches. The thirteenth principle is known as the sixth sense, through which infinite intelligence may and will communicate voluntarily without any effort from or demands by the individual. This principle is the apex of the philosophy. It can be assimilated, understood, and applied only by first mastering the other twelve principles. The sixth sense is that portion of the subconscious mind which has been referred to as the creative imagination. It has also been referred to as the receiving set through which ideas, plans, and thoughts flash into the mind. The flashes are sometimes called hunches or inspirations. The sixth sense defies description. It cannot be described to a person who has not mastered the other principles of this philosophy because such a person has no knowledge and no experience with which the sixth sense may be compared. Understanding of the sixth sense comes only by meditation through mind development from within. The sixth sense probably is the medium of contact between the finite mind of man and infinite intelligence, and for this reason it is a mixture of both the mental and the spiritual. It is believed to be the point at which the mind of man contacts the universal mind. After you have mastered the principles described in this book, you will be prepared to accept as truth a statement which may otherwise be incredible to you. Namely, through the aid of the sixth sense, you will be warned of impending dangers in time to avoid them and notified of opportunities in time to embrace them. There comes to your aid and to do your bidding with the development of the sixth sense, a guardian angel who will open to you at all times the door to the temple of wisdom. Whether or not this is a statement of truth, you will never know, except by following the instructions described in the pages of this book or some similar method of procedure. The author is not a believer in nor an advocate of miracles for the reason that he has enough knowledge of nature to understand that nature never deviates from her established laws. Some of her laws are so incomprehensible that they produce what appear to be miracles. The sixth sense comes as near to being a miracle as anything I have ever experienced, and it appears so only because I do not understand the method by which this principle is operated. This much the author does know, that there is a power, or a first cause, or an intelligence, which permeates every atom of matter and embraces every unit of energy perceptible to man, that this infinite intelligence converts acorns into oak trees, causes water to fall downhill in response to the law of gravity, follows night with day, winter with summer, each maintaining its proper place and relationship to the other. This intelligence may, through the principles of this philosophy, be induced to aid in transmuting desires into concrete or material form. The author has this knowledge because he has experimented with it and has experienced it. Step by step, through the preceding chapters, you have been led to this, the last principle. If you have mastered each of the preceding principles, you are now prepared to accept, without being skeptical, the stupendous claims made here. If you have not mastered the other principles, you must do so before you may determine definitely whether or not the claims made in this chapter are fact or fiction. While I was passing through the age of hero worship, I found myself trying to imitate those whom I most admired. Moreover, I discovered that the element of faith with which I endeavored to imitate my, mo my idols gave me great capacity to do so quite successfully. I have never entirely divested myself of this habit of hero worship, although I have passed the age commonly given over to such. My experience has taught me that the next best thing to being truly great is to emulate the great by feeling an action as nearly as possible.
Long before I had ever written a line for publication or endeavored to deliver a speech in public, I followed the habit of reshaping my own character by trying to imitate the nine men whose lives and life works had been most impressive to me. These nine men were Emerson, Payne, Edison, Darwin, Lincoln, Burbank, Napoleon, Ford, and Carnegie. Every night over a long period of years, I held an imaginary council meeting with this group whom I called my invisible counselors. The procedure was this. Just before going to sleep at night, I would close my eyes and see in my imagination this group of men seated with me around my council table. Here I had not only an opportunity to sit among those whom I considered to be great, but I actually dominated the group by serving as the chairman. I had a very definite purpose in indulging my imagination through these nightly meetings. My purpose was to rebuild my own character so it would represent a composite of the characters of my imaginary counselors. Realizing as I did early in life that I had to overcome the handicap of birth in an environment of ignorance and superstition, I deliberately assigned myself the task of voluntary rebirth through the method here described. Building character through auto-suggestion. Being an earnest student of psychology, I knew, of course, that all men have become what they are because of their dominating thoughts and desires. I knew that every deeply seated desire has the effect of causing one to seek outward expression through which that desire may be transmuted into reality. I knew that self-suggestion is a powerful factor in building character, that it is, in fact, the sole principle through which character is built. With this knowledge of the principles of mind operation, I was fairly well armed with the equipment needed in rebuilding my character. In these imaginary council meetings, I called on my cabinet members for the knowledge I wished to each to contribute, addressing myself to each member in audible words as follows. Mr. Emerson, I desire to acquire from you the marvelous understanding of nature which distinguished your life. I ask that you make an impress upon my subconscious mind or whatever qualities you possessed, which enabled you to understand and adapt yourself to the laws of nature. I ask that you assist me in reaching and drawing upon whatever sources of knowledge are available to this end. Mr. Burbank, I request that you pass on to me the knowledge which enabled you to so harmonize the laws of nature that you cause the cactus to shed its thorns and become an edible food. Give me access to the knowledge which enabled you to make two blades of grass grow where but one grew before and helped you to blend the coloring of the flowers with more splendor and harmony for you alone have successfully gilded the lily. Napoleon, I desire to acquire from you by emulation the marvelous ability you possessed to inspire men and to arouse them to greater and more determined spirit of action. Also to acquire the spirit of enduring faith, which enabled you to turn defeat into victory and to surmount staggering obstacles. Emperor of fate, king of chance, man of destiny, I salute you. Mr. Payne, I desire to acquire from you the freedom of thought and the courage and clarity with which to express convictions, which so distinguished you. Mr. Darwin, I wish to acquire from you the marvelous patience and ability to study cause and effect without bias or prejudice, so exemplified by you in the field of natural science. Mr. Lincoln, I desire to build into my own character the keen sense of justice, the untiring spirit of patience, the sense of humor, the human understanding, and the tolerance, which were your distinguishing characteristics. Mr. Car Carnegie, I am already indebted to you for my choice of a life work, which has brought me great happiness and peace of mind. I wish to acquire a thorough understanding of the principles of organized effort, which you use so effectively in the building of a great industrial enterprise. Mr. Ford, you have been among the most helpful of the men who have supplied much of the material essential to my work. I wish to acquire your spirit of persistence, determination, poise, and self-confidence, which have enabled you to master poverty, organize, unify, and simplify human effort, so I may help others to follow in your footsteps. Mr. Edison, I have seated you nearest to me at my right because of the personal cooperation you have given me during my research into the cause of failure and success. I wish to acquire from you the marvelous spirit of faith with which you have uncovered so many of nature's secrets, the spirit of unremitting toil with which you have so often wrested victory from defeat. 
I'm going to stop there. Good morning, everybody. Cindy, good to see you. So glad you could join us. Glad you're here. Eric, good to see you here. Now, I stop there because the reading continues with details of how each of those helped him to develop his character. But I also stop there because we have definite outline of how to apply that principle of auto-suggestion in a manner that truly has a beginning and an end. There's a reason to deploy it beyond just changing of emotions, right? <laughs> Good while. morning, man. Good morning. One of the um, one of the things I thought about when he was listing out those people that he has taken specific qualities from, um, I, I I noticed how I do that too. There's a really good video where uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about how a, having a single role model is kind of an overrated idea because if you have like one person, one person always has faults and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So if you can take a um, kind of what, what it sounds like he's doing is sort of self-reflecting on the people that he has specific qualities that he most admires. So he's got all those people at the table. And when he pictures what he desires about each of them, he wants to make sure that he's consistently matching what he most values about their character. So, like, I can have a lot of role models. I can have Neil deGrasse Tyson. I can have um, leaders in history, my parents, teachers I've met. You know, there are a lot of people I can count on my fingers that mm -hmm. that I admire and specific things about them. So. I like that. And I'll tell you what I like about it is you're familiar with what I did earlier, which was to replace those the committee members that I had in my head. Mm -hmm. They were the naysayers, the ones that I had allowed a seat at the table that kept me from doing a lot of things. And I could name them. I <laughs> could name them and I could hear specifically the things that they had told me that somehow stuck with me, but they did. Huh. And, I, and it was from years ago and yesterday. And I wrote that letter and fired every one of them. And you know, I still have the letter. Yes, I had to read it again. Um, and I named them and I fired them and I replaced each one of them specifically with people that have been supportive of me, have had um, encouraging things to say. And now I'm realizing after reading this, how much more I could do with this. That the, the, the details that he is actually putting out of what he wants from each individual. And as you yeah. said, is a mirror to what is already inside him. That's what I heard you say. It's already inside him. Mm -hmm. But what he's doing is he's taking the, he's recognizing it in somebody else as what he needs to grow. Or could be that he doesn't see that he has it inside him. But either way, by recognizing that I want this trait from you and saying it on a regular basis allows him to tap into that trait to be able to grow it and to change his character. I love that. I also, years and year, uh, years ago, when I was when I was young, back in the day, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can be as young. I know it's all, it's all, a, it's, you know, it, it, but you know, when you've got 30, 40 years of, of experience in between, it does take some time to recall. So, yeah. and that's what I'm doing. I'm recalling in my teens and into my twenties, I'm being told, you know, to follow somebody, to have a role model and being confused because I had seen right up front and in my own experience that individuals are fallible. <laughs> and I do not put people on pedestals. I, I, it had never made sense to me to put somebody on a pedestal. And that's the way I took that. That's the way uh -huh. I understood somebody that told me, here's your role model. Here's who you're going to follow. And the, the hero worship, you know, I would see in others. I took as you're putting these people on pedestals and when they fall, you're disappointed. And I, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't put yeah, you, on you, you, right? You take one, yeah, you take one characteristic about somebody and you sort of use that to determine their See, whole I, exactly. character. And, and, I, and that's the whole, I couldn't, that's the way I people. saw it. When somebody told yeah. me you need to pick a role model so mm -hmm. that you can emulate them, I'm like, 
but people are fallible. You're telling me that this hero worship, this adoration I would see others have for people, to me, was yeah. you're putting somebody on a pedestal and they don't belong there. No person belongs on a pedestal because they're fallible, which stopped me from understanding the concept of, right? Yes, yeah. it's all of my own. My but yeah, own. But yeah the, the counselor, the, having the table of people yes. makes everybody equal. That's, That's why you it. have a table of people. That's it. Not, and I, I did pedestal. that. Isn't level. that funny? I did that. I had that committee that would come and form the minute I was challenged with something I didn't know what to do. And they were the first ones to gather and tell me why I couldn't do it, why I wouldn't be able to succeed, what was wrong with me, and all of that stuff. Today they gather and they say, dang, good job. You know, you need to move forward because <laughs> I can see them all, right? Yeah. And, and what I'm seeing is that I can actually, why is it that they're part of my committee now? And I can tell you, it's not just because they say good things about me, because they're pretty awesome people that I've come across mm -hmm. that I respect and I admire. And I'm going to take what he's done here and and really think on why, why are, why is it okay for, why did I invite them to sit, mm -hmm. you know, beyond the ability to influence me with that positive reinforcement? Why, why them? What is that I admire and recognize it and say it aloud as he's saying and flesh them out as my committee. And, and instead of being the, oh, we're only going to meet when presented with a challenge or a problem, mm -hmm. maybe I can invite them to meet regularly. And do you have, do you have um, I was going to say, do, are people at your table like, people you've met it's probably people yes. in the long term but how, are they like still alive because a lot of the people yes. that i i admire are often not often really people from history but also people that i know very very closely and that have shared a lot with me so like mentors i've had and yes and people i've, um, I've watched youtube videos on and everybody stuff. who is currently on the committee has had a positive influence on my life mm -hmm. there are those in history that have traits that i admire that I'm inspired by, that I'm motivated by, and could take a place at the table. Mm -hmm. I hesitate to do that. Um, I've got a great imagination and a, and a horrifying need to be a realist. So <laughs> it is a conflict, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is, I mean, it is a conflict. The other funny, funny thing that I do too is it's it's almost like because I've read so many books about leadership images mm -hmm. that I don't so much know about the authors, but I know about their ideas. And I kind of sometimes call to mind the leadership images that they've taught me and say, well, hey, here's how this kind of philosophy works. That's not so much a person and of a quality they have, but that's more of an idea and how somebody sees something. So maybe that's kind of similar if it's the author that came up well, with it. Well, honestly, the, when I dropped in on the blab that you had, when you were discussing and sharing images of leadership, I'd never seen anything like that and was intrigued because that takes it away from the human aspect, that, that mm -hmm. which I can do. I can handle having those images as it doesn't matter to me that the author was 200 years ago. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, I trust, yeah. I trust the science of, of Einstein and he's dead, you know, but it's not mm -hmm. Einstein's quotes that really get me. It's the knowledge that he, he proved, right. Mm -hmm. It's the, the theories he put forth for us to explore. Um, mm -hmm. So, and, and others like that, you know, I, you know I've got, Goodness, yeah. you've got Euclid and, and uh, Plato and the great philosophers that began, yeah. you know, that in Greek time when they actually had true democracy and when it worked and things like that and the philosophies mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah. So I can take those, I can take those ideas like you're talking about with the images, um, of which I want to learn more, by the way. So uh, putting those into effect will probably be very, very helpful to me as well. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's just fascinating. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm all set. <laughs> yeah, you can start happen. today. I can talk forever. No, I did my first blab, and that was that was great. Um, I probably talked more than I should have. but um, That's how you learn uh, what works for let, you. Let people in and uh, discuss things, because I could do like one or two images and then have people discuss it. So that's that's uh, what I'm hoping you'll do, because I'd out. like to come into one and have that discussion and ask you questions so I can exactly. learn how to do that. So 
All right. Good to see you, my Have friend. a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Yes, happy Friday. Thank you, Matt. Anybody else want to jump in, join the discussion? About auto-suggestion. What can you do to change your character? What does it take? Omar, well, aren't you looking awesome? Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Looking snappy, my friend. Yes. Mm, thank you. Yes. Um, um, one second, please. All right. I thought... I'll be back. <laughs> okay, I'll be here. <laughs> Anybody else want to jump in? There's more than one seat, as you all know. Chuck. I can't get about that. Uh huh. Uh huh. You better watch it. The audio's on. <laughs> we can hear you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hello, Chuck. Good morning. Good morning. You know, this, uh, I love this idea because the other, um, the other night I, I was got to coach this this woman, well, young girl to me, but I'll call her a woman, who is aspiring to get into politics. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to her about developing her own personal board of directors. And, and she kind of looked at me a little funny and I said, I don't mean I'm, people that you admire that, that are not necessarily in the room, so to speak. I like to, I mean, if you have a creative and imaginative mind, this mm -hmm. is actually a great idea. You know, there's that old saying, you know, the, orig the original bracelet, WWJD. Yep. So you almost would say, hmm. So one, one, uh, someone on my personal board of directors is my, he's deceased, but it's one of my best friend's dads. So I would think, you know, what would he do in this situation? Or someone might have Charlene Burke on their personal board of directors or, you know, in their mind virtually and think, what would Charlene say in this, in this situation? And it's interesting because you can change your perspective just enough and have a little bit of insight into how someone else or some empathy into how they might see a situation. It's amazing how we can understand how others can see into a situation differently. Yes. <laughs> Even though we don't know what I'm they're thinking. More. Yeah. yeah, but we know them well enough. See, that's why it's easier for me to do it with real people. Now, now, you know, somebody on my committee, she's dead now, but I knew her. I knew her well. I mean, I I had many a cup of coffee at her kitchen table. And essentially, if if I were to look at the relationship from an outside point of view, she was the grandma that um I had but didn't have access to because we moved around a lot and I didn't I only saw my grandparents once or twice a year and that was it and and letter writing up until the time when they couldn't understand why I was writing the kind of things I was writing and so we stopped but um, they were supportive you know grandmas are great and there's special things about my grandmothers that are just awesome so Gwen essentially took the place of a gram a grandmother where she was direct and honest no BS you know, and thought I was the absolute smartest woman she had ever met in her life, which of course is why I kept going back for a cup of coffee. But she also gave me great knowledge um, and great wisdom, great life things that helped me to make decisions and to um, learn, you know. But I also helped her. I will state it right now. It's on the recording for anybody who knows me well, understands who Gwen was. I introduced her to my husband and her first words were, oh, my God, not him. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. what yes. a vote of confidence. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. And it was, it was, um, yes, yes. And I just, I said, yes, that's him. And she says, oh, please, no. I said, yeah. That's him. And so it took her a few years, but I, he was as persistent with her as he was with me. And they turned into great, great friends. Uh, but yes, that was Gwen. And that's how close she was. You know, she was the first one that I told that I was who I fell in love with. And she was the first one of many that told me not him. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think this, this is actually a good way. You know, if you are looking to develop some the mindset and character traits that you admire. I mean, uh -huh. obviously the people you pick for your personal board of directors have individual qualities that you desire. And you could say, you know what? I'm going to emulate each one of those things and I'm going to build 
you know, almost like playing cards and getting the, you know, instead of getting a, a three of seven and not, you get your own Royal flush basically kind of, yes. you know, you can build it all and emulate those. And, you know, there's a lot of people will say, fake it to you, make it, or uh, Amy Cuddy does her thing with uh, leadership styles and, and uh -huh. is uh, her Ted talk is very good about fake it until you become it. Right. So that, I'm familiar that, with it. Yeah. I think that's, uh, and she has a little, um graphic that that kind of explains that that's that's pretty good well so i'm looking at this letter that i wrote when i fired everybody and replaced them i tell you it was the best exercise ever honest god's truth now i haven't i'm done with it because they're gone you know i remember who they are but they don't have an impact on my life anymore it, it's amazing how much it's it's changed and i'm thinking that my last line in the letter is my time is now and that's why i'm occupying the new seat at the table with the committee that wants to help me grow and what i'm going to do this is going to be my my homework anybody wants to join me in this that's mm -hmm. fine but i'm just telling it right out telling you all what I will do now is I'm going to take that line as the beginning of the new letter and what it will do is to uh, take each one that I've named and identify I'm going to take some time it's going to take I know a couple it's going to take some days and some real quiet time to do it identify that which I admire about each and do what Napoleon Hill did himself, which is to repeatedly recognize that those are the people, this is what I admire about you, and this is what I want more of, and this is, you know, I'll flesh that out as I go, but um, that's what I'm going to do, just so you know. <laughs> You'll hear about it later, right? <laughs> you know you will. <laughs> now, are these people, these are, are these actual persons you're, yes. you're talking about? Yeah, they're oh, okay. real people that have had a, well, Gwen is one of them, you right. know, and I can tell you right now, I loved her um, solid foundation for living, her common sense, her ability to communicate and see answers quickly when dealing with other people. Right. You know, but there's some are living, some, some were from, from uh, my uh, young years, but they're ones that I replaced the negatives with. Sure. And there's something I admire about them, obviously. It's not just that they say good things to me, but it is some people that I admire and I trust. So that's uh, what I'm going to do. I think it's a great, great, <laughs> I think it's a great exercise. I'm going to fire you from my mind or whatever because you're, oh, yeah. you're a you negative influence on me. And, and again, and I'm going to hire some people that uh, your own little personal corporate, internal por corporation. I'm going to hire that's some people in my mind. Who are going to be positive for what I want. And, and I can call on them. And I do when I'm challenged with something. Now it is the, the, you know, the committee meets and says, you can do it. I know you can because you've done something similar or um, I'll help you. You'll be OK or calm down. You know, they say the things that I know that they would say. I don't consciously sit there and say, what would so and so say? But it's been by replacing them they're doing the same thing the negatives did, which is doubt creeps in, the challenge is in front of me, holy crap, I don't know that I can do this, right? right. And suddenly it's flooded with, because that's me talking, and it's and then they, they all meet up there, and they get to talking, and it um, helps me get over the anxiety and the fear to move forward anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to expand on that a little bit because... I still struggle with seeing myself as other people see me. That's why I'm going to do it. Honestly, people tell me I'm a leader and I just like, I don't see that, but okay. Um, people tell me that I'm smarter than I think I am. And that is something that I've been battling. Um, and uh, people tell me other things that just, I'm not seeing myself that way. And, um, I'd like to, and I think that this exercise may help me to do that by developing, by feeling like I've actually made a, a conscious effort to develop those skills or those traits. Well, yeah, we'll I think I think most people are probably smarter than they think they are, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's probably dangerous for that smaller proportion of people who think they're smarter than they really are. <laughs> well, see, that's what holds me. Yeah, that's what holds me back. What if I believe you and I'm really not that smart? Yeah, I think there's I think there's something that's 
There's actually there's actually something called the Dunning Kruger effect, and that's exactly what it is. People who are disillusioned by thinking they are more talented or smarter than they actually are, and then at the same time, not giving other people the credit mm -hmm. for being as smart or as talented as they truly are. It's kind Interesting. of Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. I, I heard that that we're all geniuses in something. That we all have a certain talents and genius in something, and you know, uh, we specialize in our own areas. You know, we got to find out what it is. But we're all born geniuses, and there was a genius that said that I can't remember his name. <laughs> you know. Well, that's what I. You know, and Elmar, that's an excellent point. And Chuck, mm -hmm. I was going to say what Ken is saying is that it sounds like the definition of narcissism, but that's not it, is it? Mm -hmm. That's not quite it. No, no. That's a little bit too much love for yourself and selfishness, you know, okay. but I, again, a lot of the narcissists are very successful people. You know, they're so, you know, they're so absorbed. Self yeah, but they're some of the most successful people. They have to have it. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to say, though, Charlene, uh, from based on what uh, I'm hearing you talk about your past and a lot of people talking about how smart you are, obviously you must be. You know, and from what I can see is that, you know, I, I would, you know, not that we, you know, you are old or anything, but I mm -hmm. would imagine at one time you were super gorgeous. Is that true? Um, that's the reason your husband got you because you not only was you gorgeous or a trophy. Well, girl, they told me that, but, but I were, don't, I never saw that. But you were, well, the artist is never satisfied, you know, but uh, your husband saw something in you and it seems like he's a very high achiever. Himself. Yeah, but he was, you know how smart he was? How smart. I'll tell you how smart he was. Mm -hmm. He said he loved me for my brain. Oh, okay. That's, so, that's a smart man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let, let me put it this way. Um, one of the issues that I had now, and I'm over 50 now, so I can look at this a little more objectively mm -hmm. and honestly. Um, one of the issues I had was I attracted a lot of male attention unintentionally. Mm -hmm. Um I had, you know, the I had the body, and I guess I had the looks. Nobody, mm -hmm. you know, but I trust me. After the third date, I was getting marriage proposals constantly, mm -hmm. so, and it was a struggle. But I also had issues working in offices with um, uh, octopus hands mm -hmm. and um, accidental placement of hands. I got groped a lot. I got, um, I had, I had a lot of issues with that. Trust uh, me. Uh, I dressed mm -hmm. well, yeah. And so what I did was um, internalize a lot of that, mm -hmm. a lot of that. And one of the best things that happened to me, and how many women I got in here, one or two of you might understand this, and I'm not going to say all women get this. Um, mm -hmm. When I gained weight, it was awesome because the attention stopped and then I could focus on succeeding. Oh. And then, then you guys got out of the way and I could get things uh -huh. done. So you protected but, yourself. But by yes. gaining weight, that was protection. Go yeah, ahead. once I realized that, I got smart enough to say, oh hell, we'll add another 10. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but um, yes, I attracted a lot of male attention. A lot of it was <laughs> negative. I was incapable of handling it. Uh, again, looking back honestly, and Gwen was actually one of those that was of great assistance in helping me to handle it. So, because um, it could have been worse, my response could have been worse. Mm -hmm. um, but again, yes, that was just, I did. I admit, okay, I admit, yes, I did. <laughs> well, I don't know where that was supposed to go, but Omar, yes, okay, you made me admit it. <laughs> you know? But he was smart. I'll tell you this, fellas. My husband was really smart. He called me beautiful, kept mm -hmm. it to that level, and he told me, and he listened to me, and he talked to me. And honest to God's truth, I'm not kidding. I laugh about when he was persistent, and I and, and we all talk about that. My husband, people who know my husband know this to be true. But it wasn't that he was chasing me and telling me constantly he loved me. He spent he spent probably a good seven or eight months around me before he would tell me he loved me because he listened to me. He talked to me. He encouraged me to talk. He wanted to know what was in my brain. And it took that long for me to start telling him mm -hmm. the way I thought and how I saw the world and the things that I knew and the things that I was capable of. And he mm -hmm. accepted that. So, so they got to that point and then he told me he loved me and we were cool. Okay. So what is it that attracted <laughs> besides his persistence? What was it that attracted you to him? You know, 
Oh, his brain. His brain. Okay. Yeah, so there he's was an engineer at heart. Okay, so there was a meeting of the mind. Could, Absolutely. Would, okay. Well, would you say that he relied on you you for guidance or balance? Was that? Oh, was, absolutely. We okay, we so, do that for each other. Yeah. So you guys was a mastermind before you even read the book. I was. Yes. In the uh, the same thing, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you know, and and that's what. Uh, and so, he also, just so you know, everybody, he's also on the committee. He was never on the other committee on the negative one. He is on the committee that I have today. Great. Just so you know. You know, you know, my thing, I just wanted to say, I really feel that that's one of the most valuable things that LAP is offering here, you know, that we can come together, you know, that I can form a new committee right here oh, yeah. at home. And, you know, we can meet uh, as if, you know, Edison and Frank Firestone, uh, the other committee that was part of uh, Napoleon's Hill Committee, that we can do this on a regular basis. And since uh, Actually, I fired uh, my guys today. You know, I got interrupted. I told them I don't want to talk to you no more. I don't want to deal with the trees. I got to stay single focus. I have to have a definite a purpose. This tree, come, tree, come, trees and bitcoins is not working for me. Either I'm be a tree man or a bitcoin man. I choose yeah. the latter. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's it. You know, meeting of my. But I'm you have an excellent point, Omar. You have an excellent point that those of us who are struggling to find people to emulate, to mm -hmm. find role models, to um, understand how to do what Napoleon Hill's asking, uh, what he's sharing he did, mm -hmm. which is to find somebody and be able to take just that one piece or to find the character that we want for ourselves. We can do that on Blab. Mm -hmm. We're being introduced to varieties of people. Some we are attracted to, some mentally we're attracted to, some spiritually we're attracted to, others we're repelled by. We all know how that happens. Mm -hmm. And so there's people that say something that gives us a glimpse into their character mm -hmm. that we can take for our own or to use as, as, as a role model in the sense of this piece of this person recognize see i gotta detail it out i gotta recognize mm -hmm. it's only a piece of the person right mm -hmm. right so that piece that i really really like and i would mm -hmm. like to have more of myself i think mm -hmm. you're you're spot on oh you know if right. somebody in search of blab's a great place to find that yes because we might we might be we might find a lab that we like at first or we might find people there and it's you know and later outgrow them you know it's an evolution that some people we may like and there might be others that come on that we like better so we we don't have to commit to being in a certain box we can fire them as we grow as we evolve you know there's so many people because we're reaching people now like all over the world Mm -hmm. All different mindsets. So, you know, it don't mean that we get on one committee and we're stuck. It means that, you know, we are naturally attracting the people that we want in our life on, on Blab or wherever. But I, I really think Blab is causing a disruption. You know, and again, yes. you know, I'm sure you've heard of the, the hundred monkey syndrome, right? Or the hundred, the story of the hundred monkey. I'm not sure I've heard it. It's called that. Tell us about it. Oh, well, once upon a time, there was a group of monkeys and they all lived in Africa. And this monkey, they were, he was over by the, the, the little stream, right? And he dropped his yam into the, the stream. So he reached over and picked it up and noticed that, you know, dried it off and noticed that when he ate it, he didn't have any grit or anything. It actually tastes better. But now there was another monkey that saw him do that. He put his yam in the water, rinsed it off, wiped it, and ate it, and it was cool too. The third monkey saw it, did the same thing. The fourth monkey, fifth monkey. So next thing, the, the whole tribe of monkeys are now eating yams after they rinsed them off in the stream. But when it got to the hundredth monkey, don't you know the monkey that's over in India picked up his yam, dumped it in a stream, and rinsed it off and ate it. So. You get the story, you know, that as a, as a collective consciousness, the collective consciousness here, you know, okay. like we do, we follow each other. Right. This is relevant. We, oh, <laughs> we follow each other. We do what each other do. We emanate right. basically what the subject is saying here. Then the higher, the infinite intelligent automatically telegraphs 
that knowledge to people across the world. I was thinking that's where you were going with it, but now, all right, yes. So by our combined effort, we're Mm -hmm. tapping into the infinite intelligence, the creative imagination, right? Mm -hmm. The masterminding of coming together and focusing on one thing. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, because we are all connected with energy as humans, Mm -hmm. that the same thing can then happen to somebody else by virtue mm-hmm. of our activity. Bye, Chuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Glad you were right. here. Great stuff. Mm-hmm. Great stuff. Because that's yeah, what that's, this is. That's okay. it. We're talking about the sixth sense here. You yes, know, that we are. when there's enough, when we unify our, our consciousness mm-hmm. and we all identify with the uh with the infinite intelligence, which is God, you know, i.e. Allah, whatever you want to call it. Whatever the name is, yes. Right. Um uh that you know there's a third uh party there's an infinite you know there is. Uh, collective going on right and 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 that's what's going on you know it's, let's go back to you and your husband so you know because you know they said that unless you can understand this principle is really you you, you kind of you can't understand this principle until you're understanding the other ones you know and we right. talked about you know all that stuff but you know again your husband saw something in you first of all you're a trophy girl then not only that he saw you had a great mind mm-hmm. that, or a mind that would help accelerate his intelligence mm-hmm. he knew that wow you're smart and i'm smart and together we can focus on some stuff and besides your sexy body we can really make a great life and uh, manifest a lot of money and have all the things that we want and so he saw that, and that's why he pursued you, because he okay. knew that you were the one. And then again, you know, yeah. And, and, and so, so, so now we're you're at the level of getting other people to come into your collective minds and take it to the next level, right? That's what why you. That's find one way to look at it. That's mm-hmm. one way to look at it. Um, the idea we have to remember that each of us has the capacity. Mm -hmm. to shut off and close the door to seeing opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, and and that was um, a big part of my life was shutting the door to possibilities, to opportunities and things of that sort. When I opened the door Mm -hmm. is when I started changing because I became willing to change. Um, I be, I focused on that pieces and parts of me to change. I just didn't do it quite like Napoleon Hill is saying it. Um, I I said this before, where I sought people who had specific qualities, or I guess you could call it character or experiences. More importantly, that I could tap into, and I asked, "How do I do this?" So one at a time, I tackled the barriers within me to being better and being um, more than who I was at the time. Now, what I like about what Napoleon Hill is talking about, number one, is I get it today. I I would not, I did not get this. I would not have gotten this. I would not have understood this um, Mm -hmm. years ago. It would not have been, it would not have made sense because I would have been stuck on, he's talking to dead people and he didn't know them. Honestly, that's what I would have done. Today, I understand why he is doing the combination of the dead and the living. Today, I've read more biographies and understand how people can take that. For me, though, what I am going to do is I'm just simply going to move forward with an existing exercise, which is I've already identified people that I want on that committee. I've already identified them, and I already let them have influence in my decision making and in my day and how I approach things. Mm -hmm. So why don't I flesh them out and actually specify to myself why they have a seat at the table, why Mm -hmm. they're allowed there? Because what I'm seeing is that with with that reading of Napoleon Hill and actually saying through auto-suggestion, the repeated stating aloud and the conversing with individuals of, you know, why you have a seat at my table will open me up to being better, to improving those pieces of myself, to 
uh, again, no longer having to identify that I really need this skill or I really want to improve this one piece. Instead, looking at all the people that are already at the committee and mm -hmm. letting that happen by virtue of identifying those things in them that are positive, that are things I admire. Uh, I mean, there's some great strength in, in some of these people, great strength, meaning they have such a backbone of steel that it's uh, you can't you can't bend them you can't it's, stop it's, them it's i don't hot. have that it's hot at the table uh -huh. um no no okay no she's not at the table although she should be because she always yeah. pours honey on me because she thinks i'm awesome yeah, um, but um no these are people that uh, all at the same time that all the negative people had been in my life, these mm -hmm. positive people had been in my life. I had just mm -hmm. chosen to focus on the negatives. Mm -hmm. I had chosen to uh, to um, bring those on as they were the ones that were going to be the committee in my head to continually mm -hmm. keep me from doing things. So and so I chose those people who all along had been there. I just hadn't recognized them. Mm -hmm. I so, did recognize them and brought them in. So they're not on Blab or they're local people or people that you can feel and touch. Oh yeah, these were real people throughout my mm -hmm. life. So are one, they, of them, one of them is a teacher from fourth grade. Mm -hmm. So so again, do you think that um, that we can do this on Blab that you know you can have a table? Well, of course. And what, uh, I, what I mean by that is that you can, so there's two ways to do it now, two ways to view this. The way we're looking at it from Napoleon Hill's point of view is how can I be more and be better? And I can do that through identifying people who I, I admire and traits that I admire and, and focusing on that trait to awaken the trait in myself. Mm -hmm. Because that's the, that's the focus, right? The focus is for me to be more, to be better to identify the individual traits that I want to grow. And how I can do that is by comparing it, having that comparison with somebody else. The other way we can do that is take that principle of identifying those that can be helpful and making me better and me more than what I am by recognizing the people that come, we meet through something like Blab, we otherwise wouldn't have had contact with and recognizing the attraction to that spirit or trait that they have, getting to know them and understanding that they can be helpful to me. You can also take it one step further and actually have them become a part of your personal mastermind group where you develop that relationship and ask them, are you willing to mentor me? Are you willing to meet regularly with me? Are you willing to share what you know and who you are so that I can be better? So I think Blab can absolutely put, put that, I think it's a beautiful forum for being able to do that. But it takes us away from the individual here, me, what are my dominating thoughts and desires and how can I use the principle of auto-suggestion to change my dominating thoughts and desires, but also, mm -hmm. also to be so connected to what I want, what I'm working towards, mm -hmm. and how I want to be, to be able to develop that sixth sense so that I can recognize opportunities, people. I can get inspired. I can get that that burst of genius. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, he calls it inspiration. I've always called it inspiration. I've always trusted my own instinct and internal flashes of hunches or inspiration before mm -hmm. I trusted somebody else's. Um, now that I have focus, especially on my business, we'll put it on my business because this has happened personally, but especially on my business. Now that I'm focused on the vision that I have for the business, I, it, I know what it's going to look like. I know what the end result is. That's what I'm working towards. I've got these people in my head that are going to help me get there by making me better. And I've got people around me, honestly, that are mentoring and able to tap into for guidance when I just don't know what to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Now I can honestly say, I really can trust <laughs> my instincts and my gut and trust the hunches that come to me because over mm -hmm. time they've proven to be right. Proven by when I'm focused on something, whether it's changing myself 
or approaching something new that I can trust my instincts. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard uh, you uh, tell Matt that you really enjoy uh, what he did with uh, the vision. Mm -hmm. Did they do vision board? Was it a vision no. board? No. no, what he was doing is he called it the, it was a sharing from a book about leadership and the symbols of leadership. And mm -hmm. he literally was taking symbols we're all familiar with and showing us, just drawing them on a notepad, paper, note paper, mm -hmm. you know, like a bell curve, what, what that looks like when people mm -hmm. reach the peak of something and how, how you take this and you visualize this first, where am I on that curve? And um, he took a couple others, but I couldn't stay very long. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was doing an overview, basically. He wasn't doing mm -hmm. an in-depth anything. So um, I'm looking forward to him scheduling another mm -hmm. one. I'd like. How, how do you feel about a vision board as far as auto-suggestion go? A vision board and uh, say uh, uh, affirmation tapes or self hypnosis tapes. You know, I don't think that existed while when the book was wrote. But do you find that? But that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing on his own before the the recording. You know, taking advantage of radio or anything like that. He was doing his own auto suggestion. Um, yeah, absolutely. I believe in um, vision boards and. Um, having a recording and having it continuously play subliminally absolutely has an effect. I'm a, a now see now we're going to go into my journey into neuroscience and mm -hmm. um, psych and abnormal psych. Um, in the marketing world, the use of subliminal messages became outlawed. And yes, that's where I was going to go with this. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, Leah. Yes, we need to be very cautious. So. I make my own vision board. I do mm -hmm. not use anybody else's recordings except my own. And even then, I I really don't do it regularly. The vision board is what's very real about what I'm working towards. So that, um, okay, Steve, I'm glad you love the discussion. I look forward to seeing you next week. Good to have mm -hmm. you here. Um, I, because, it's, it's been proven, and I can bring up the studies for you over the years where it's been proven that somebody else is going to have control over your thoughts. Mm -hmm. That when you do the auto-suggestion with somebody else's words, somebody else's experiences, somebody else's thoughts, mm -hmm. then you lose control of yourself. And that scares me. So I've never really been drawn to that. But it also doesn't, like I said, it also helps that I did some study. In my, I mean, I've been in marketing since the early 80s. And when they outlawed, I, you know, back back when in 60s, 70s, they began outlawing subliminal mm -hmm. messages because there is great influence there. And I can gain control of a mob. I can gain control of a group of people. Use of subliminal messages. Mm -hmm. I'm also leery. I told you earlier, I'm leery of putting anybody on a pedestal. So when I see religious leaders mm -hmm. who have great followings, the influence they have over the following is tremendous. And I respect those who respect the responsibility that they have and take it seriously. Mm -hmm. But Again, I tend to, I'm not a crowd follower. I'm not, I don't herd well. I'm a very independent thinker. And part of it is because that's the way I'm made. Part of it is because I've learned along the way of watching mm -hmm. and reading and education that um, there is great power in the ability to control your thoughts, Omar. Because yeah. I know that your thoughts directly impact your actions. And if I want a direct result to happen, take a look. Something as simple as I want this group of young men to be fierce and powerful and do destruction. So I get out the punk music that has beats that are <laughs> hundreds of times faster than they should be. You can't dance to it, but it hypes you up, right? <laughs> Combine right. that with intense, intense beat in the background. This is just music. Mm -hmm. Intense beat in the background of metal music. That's where I'm going with it. Yes, mm -hmm. of heavy metal music. Um, it won't take long. 
it won't take long bef before that testosterone level is up and in use and they are so hyped and they need to express that energy. They need to get it out. So what do they do? You can get, this is what can happen. I've seen it. I've seen it in other mobs. Mm -hmm. um, you can get them to a state where now all it takes is the leader to say, now go fight. Now go kill. Now go um, after. Now go win. You see it in sports, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in the uh, New Zealand, <laughs> the Kiwi soccer team. They, they bring in ancient warrior dance and sound to get them up to scare the bejeebies out of the other team but to get them in a state so that they can win other people can do that to you and mm -hmm. i recognize it most of the time and i walk away mm -hmm. um, most of us have seen it yes trudy mm -hmm. um, yeah. i'm not surprised that you've seen it most of us have some can't recognize it for what it is but mm -hmm. knowing all that is why I'm attracted to what Napoleon Hill has been saying all along, which is it's me. It really is me that can um, can see this, recognize it, be better, be more by doing things for myself. And it's all based on the individual's level of integrity, of honesty, of awareness, of not harming any other person. That's why I like what Napoleon Hill is putting together. His studies show that these 500 some odd people he's been watching and interviewing, this is the way they were. And they were so successful because they were good hearted people that lived with integrity, that had a foundation of do no harm to anybody else. Be the best you can be, offer the best you can offer in exchange for the highest dollar somebody's willing to pay. You know, that yeah. all hits me because it's all about the individual. How much better can I be? Mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate you saying that you got to watch who you listen to. But, you know, I am a fan of uh, Spotify. And on that, I have a um, playlist. And one of them is a millionaire mindset. Mm -hmm. And I really like that. It, you know, I haven't listened to it in a few weeks now, but. You know, on it, it, it says things that's pretty much generic, like I have a millionaire mind, I am prosperous, I am healthy, I'm, I am, you know, um, I'm prosperous, I'm happy, I'm peaceful, everything I want comes to me. And it just makes constant affirmations of things that's true for what I want, so I can identify with that. You know. Uh -huh. it, Another one uh, that Wayne Dyer did, you know, he's one of my favorite artists uh, or um, philosophers uh, because he was from Warren, Michigan. You know, he passed away and I think yeah. he, okay, but he has a I am meditation sound frequency where there is no words and it's just sound and it's resonating at a the level of the I am frequency, which um, uh, which is really good. You know, I think it's the 528 frequency, you know, that uh, I am. And, you know, that's kind of like next level uh, think and grow rich stuff, you know, that. Did I? All right. Hold on. Did I hiccup or did you, Omar? I didn't. Okay. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's just I'm trying to say, trying to do something to decide. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Trudy has to leave. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, you're talking about private meditation. And yeah. um, so hang on tight because I noticed I am at the top of the hour. So mm -hmm. I want to I want to close okay. this down for the replay. OK, just for the recording. So hang on a second. We can continue the conversation. OK, mm -hmm. Rocco, you're woo -woo. Rocco. Yes, we're getting into the woo woo stuff. I know. Yeah. So but I want to respect somebody else's view. OK, so hang tight. Uh, thank you, everybody who's joined me in the live stream, Matt, Chuck, Omar, and all of you in the comment section. It's been a pleasure having you with us and joining the conversation. This is Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know. That's www.growbecauseyouknow.com. I want to offer to you an opportunity to move forward with the day on purpose, with purpose, to grow your hearts, grow your minds, and grow your business. Until